Hello and welcome to the Bike Radar News Show. Now, if you missed the first episode, how could you actually miss the first episode? This is a new series on the channel where we discuss the latest and the greatest cycling tech news and some rumors too. We also like to throw down some topical opinions and discussions. So be sure to let us know what you think of today's subjects in the comments. Now in this month's episode, we'll be discussing Campagnolo's leaked new super record wireless group set. Does this spell the end for high-end mechanical drivetrains? We'll also be taking a look at Rain Riata's crazy custom Cannondale gravel bike weapon. It's amazing. And there's even more drivetrain news, as it's been a big month for Shimano and SRAM, as they launch new gear at completely opposite ends of the pricing spectrum. And finally, we'll be handing it over to you, our lovely, lovely viewers, as we take a look at your best comments from the month gone. Right then, Tom, should we dive in? Yep, let's jump right in. Campagnolo looks set to go fully wireless with its new 12-speed electronic group set, dubbed Super Record WRL. They're also ditching the brand's iconic thumb shifters. Well, this is according to an FCC license filed by Campagnolo and product leaks that we've seen on retailer websites. While it's great to see what looks like some new top-end kit from Campagnolo, we're not seeing any evidence of mechanical shifting or rim brakes continuing. So if you love the feel of a good old cable operated shift or the simplicity of rim brakes, this could be time to say a very teary, teary goodbye. Liam, what do you make of this breaking news? I'm breaking. <laughs> uh, I have to say that it's a shame really to see mechanical shifting and rim brakes possibly going from the top end. Um, personally, from what I've heard from manufacturers, this is just a reflection or would be a reflection. We don't know if it's going to happen yet. This would be a reflection of the market as it is. People just aren't buying rim brake bikes. Well, not. There are many that you can buy, but they're certainly not buying mechanical shifting. Like if you're going for a top end group set, you're going for disc brakes and you're going for electronic shifting. So I would love it to still be there, but I don't know how how many how many customers could Campag serve with it. I don't think there'd be that many. You know, like no. you say, I definitely think that we're moving over to a, a fully electronic age now with DI2, obviously the new WRL stuff from Campag, SRAM's Axis as well, and rim brakes. As much as we love them, and I can see the appeal of them, you know, from a simplicity point of view. Yeah, I think their days are numbered, really. I think we're, we're getting yeah. into a, a full-on world of disc brakes only from now on, I feel. But what do we know about the new tech? Because from what I've seen, Campagnolo appears to be following SRAM in going fully wireless. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Campagnolo's designs show a different shifter arrangement to what we're used to, with the brand's trademark thumb shifter seemingly consigned to history. Instead, the shifter paddle features two separate buttons, one for upshifts and the other for downshifts. The brake lever continues, obviously, to only be used for braking. So it's kind of a more of a DI2 sort of system than SRAM's sort of electronic double tap system that they're using with, with that that's, system. That's what I would expect. I mean, the shifting arrangement is similar to FSA's K-Force Wii, although it's important to note that the buttons don't appear to be shared on kind of one rocker plate. Yeah, so as well as sharing some of those ideas from other manufacturers, it also appears to use a 10 tooth starting mm. sprocket on the cassette. New chain ring sizes, Campag's new ProTech button bracket borrowed from their e-car system and new disc brakes as well. I mean, from the product code, we reckon that this is gonna be a 12 speed group set, but we're not sure whether rim brakes are getting dropped. We just haven't seen any evidence, so what do you think about that? Do you think rim brakes should stay? Would you like them to stay? Let us know down in the comments below. I have to say it is worth mentioning that current super record group set is offered in mechanical shifting with rim brakes, electronic shifting with rim brakes, mechanical shifting with disc brakes, and then disc brakes and electronic shifting. So that's quite a broad lineup. And with so many bikes being electronic shifting and disc brake only these days, it will be interesting to see whether Campagnolo continues to offer such a large choice. 
Yeah, definitely going to be interesting to see how that progresses. So will this spell the end for mechanical shifting at the high end level? SRAM doesn't offer mechanical shifting on its top end red group set and neither does Shimano on draw race either. So we're really hoping that Campag doesn't stop making its top end mechanical stuff. It's going to be a, it's going to be a sad day if it does. Would be. Before we move on to possibly the most bonkers gravel bike that I have ever seen, we've got to tell you about the launch of MB UK on YouTube. It'll all be here, so if you're subscribed to the channel, you won't miss a thing. And of course, you are subscribed to the channel, aren't you? Of course you are. They've hit the ground running with two cracking videos. We've linked them both below, so go and check them out. They are definitely worth a watch, believe me. Now, Tom, this is Rain Rata's custom Cannondale Topstone lefty. This is his gravel bike. I don't know what to say about this. this it's interesting, is, isn't it? It is very interesting. Very interesting. This guy is the four-time, I think, Florida gravel state champion. I think he's, he's undefeated. Got pedigree. He's certainly undisputed. Um, mm. He is a fruit seller by trade. Interesting. Quick question. little thing. He used to deliver and like collect all of his fruit up until the point, he used to do it on his bike up until the point it got to over 450 kilos in weight. 450, 450 kilos. kilos. That's, that's a, yeah, yeah that's, that's we're gonna you, need a bigger trailer. You're gonna need a van. So we've got to look through the spec on this bike because I think it's about as wild a setup as I've ever seen yeah. before. I've seen some crazy pro setups in the Peloton despite being a mountain biker. But this, for me, takes the biscuit. So yeah. run us through it, Liam. What we have here, we've got a 50 tooth chainring because obviously you need a big chainring. That's a big boy. When you're going as fast as rain. Uh, this is running a quark power meter. It's got a SRAM force group set. This is a mullet setup. The stem on this thing is 200 millimeters long. That's, yeah, long. Um, a custom made handlebar, not just like a stupid narrow handlebar, custom, custom made. made. They bought an, a bar off um, Amazon and then chopped it down and then welded it together. Uh, 25 centimeters across the tops. Um, he will switch though, because that's, it's a bit interesting, I think, if it's if you're going downhill. It's borderline dangerous, It's fine I would on the, say. the flat stuff, but he will switch to a 27 centimeter works handlebar for UCI World Gravel events. Also because his position is a bit illegal, like a lot the, illegal. The, the width isn't an mm. issue. It's because he's resting his forearms on the majority, on of, the the majority bar. of the bar. That's where yeah. he falls foul. Yeah. But, I mean, it, that's almost like resting your hands on the stem really, isn't it? It's pretty much a full TT bike style setup on there. But yeah, we've not got much more to say about this. Um, it's just crazy. <laughs> uh, what do you think about it? Um, let us know down in the comments below. And we right now have a poll going on in the community section. Do you think this is like the best setup that anyone has ever made? Or do you think this position is a bit dangerous? Let us know by following the link. I'm gonna put it just up there. Yeah, put it above my head. It's a big month for drivetrains as SRAM has launched not only the revised Force Axis, but the all new Eagle T-Type drivetrains as well. So while Force is just a revision of the old group set, T-Type completely rewrites what we know about SRAM Eagle's drivetrains. If you want to know more about T-Type and the new Force groups, check out our dedicated videos and reviews in the links in the description. Yeah, and in a bit of breaking news, it seems like TRP are releasing a new 12-speed mountain bike drivetrain as well. Ooh. They already have their TR12 setup, which has been out for a couple of years now, which Alex Evans reviewed a couple of years ago. Yep, there's a new story on the website for the new TRP. Hopefully we'll be able to get our hands on it soon, so stay tuned for more and definitely check out that leaked new story. Shimano, meanwhile, has been busy releasing its Q's group set, which is decidedly more budget focused, I have to say. But this stuff might be about to make things extra complicated for us paying customers. Yet, yeah, in case you're interested, Shimano say that Q's stands for creating unique experiences. I'm not quite sure where they got that from, but we'll, we'll go with that. The key thing with Q's, along with being excellent value, is improved compatibility across the range. While pretty much none of it will work with any non-Q group sets, 
all Q's components use the same cable pull ratios to simplify things. They use the same 11 speed chains and 11 speed cog spacing regardless of whether they are 9, 10 or 11 speed. I mean that's quite clever and this means that you can use different speeds of Q's components with one another. So in theory you could run a 9 speed rear derailleur with the 11 speed shifter and a 10 speed cassette maybe. This cross compatibility between models should make it easier for shops and consumers alike when it comes to sourcing spares and making things work in a bit of a bind. Yet yeah, it might be handy if, for example, you are on a 700 km gravel ride across the Canary Islands, like our videographer Robin did recently. The video on that provides some excellent escapism, so it is well worth a watch. The other big news with Q's, that's a mouthful, is that it uses Shimano's Link Glide technology. This is said to be more durable than Shimano's Hyperglide cassette while offering improved shift performance. It does mean, however, that you can't use Hyperglide cassettes with cues, and likewise, the Link Glide cassettes can't be used with Hyperglide group sets. So, oddly, in trying to improve compatibility, they've just made cues incompatible with parts many riders will already have. So the only riders to benefit from this will be riders who buy a new bike with queues or those who make the wholesale change to their existing bikes. Yeah, it is a bit of a pain that one. Mm. So in a typical bike industry, as always, in trying to make things easier and improve compatibility, they've just given us more incompatibility yeah. issues. So what do you think? Has Q's improved compatibility or has it just muddied the waters even further? Let us know what you think in the comments because we'd love to know what you think. So we're going to start off with a comment from that aforementioned MBUK video. So this one is from Dirt Surfer NZ from a lap with Ollie Wilkins. Uh, he commented, Noise Corners Camera Dude, uh, referring to Max falling off his ah. bike on, on, well, Ollie Wilkins' bike, actually not even Max's bike, and very hurriedly sort of brushing it down afterwards. And yeah, brushing off the whole situation. If you haven't watched the video, definitely worth a watch for that bit alone. The next comment is from under the Best Value Aero Upgrades. This was Acoustic Gearhead, which is a great name. I need a re-upload with a counter in the corner for every mention of what, also including every instance of possibly, but unlikely, unintended puns, mostly what. So yeah, I, we, said, we said what. There's a lot of what's going on in that video, but then it is all about saving what. And we saved 70, so you could definitely go and check out that video, because we saved a lot of what's. If you saved 70 what's, in the video in terms of aero, does that mean you could put 70 watts back into the video? Is that what we're saying? And there'll kind of be an equilibrium between the two. Maybe we could get 70 views from this segue. We, we could do, yeah. That's I'm a really, sure. really bad pun from that one, but we'll run with it anyway. The next one is from Wolfheart MC under 10 World Tour Road Bikes. Apparently tasty is an adjective that should be reserved for food and drink only. So there I we, have, to we have been told with that. Even, even if we have been told the internet has told us, I don't yep. I don't agree with that. No, a bike can I'm definitely, so definitely sorry. be tasty. So sorry. Yeah. So we've got the final comment from Matt TM, which he put underneath the wildest gravel bike short, obviously Rainer Atter's bike we discussed earlier. So we finally all accepted that gravel bikes are just 90s mountain bikes and we're now giving them paint jobs from the 90s as well. So I have to agree with that, you know, a lot of gravel bikes nowadays do look basically like 90s mountain bikes. You know, John Tomac famously raced on a drop bar Yeti back in the day with a Tioga disc wheel. If you're old enough to remember those, I'm not really old enough, but I remember seeing them as a kid. I had John Tomac on my bedroom wall at home. So, uh, so yeah, I definitely think that we're seeing that sort of crossover where gravel bikes are kind of becoming 90s mountain bikes. Liam, what do you think on that one? I won't hear a word said against that paint job. So that's my, that's my two pence. It, it is a lovely, lovely paint job. Now, as this video goes live, Felix and I will be actually racing Battle on the Beach for a Bike Radar Gravel Diaries video. It's a massive race full of chaos on a beach uh, in Wales, which will be a brilliant video, I have to say. Yeah, Liam, you also went out to Spain with Robin recently because, yes, yeah, she just wasn't tired from her 700 kilometer gravel ride. So I believe you got to mess around on Mondraker's new Dusty E gravel bike. 
that should be a video hitting your screens very soon. So be sure to make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss out. Right, that's all we've got time for this month. Hope you'll join us again next month for the third edition of The New Show. Bye. Bye.